Today we're lucky enough to be joined by wonderful author Diane Hoffmeyer. She's here to talk about her recent tiny old book, Paris Cat. There's something wonderful about going back in time with a cat who can't be underestimated. What was your message behind this? Well, with, with Paris Cat, I think I was trying to show children that anything is possible. And I think it's because I was an incredibly shy child and I didn't play sport. I was a real nerd, sort of sat under the staircase when everyone else was running around. So all I was interested in later at school was acting, because I think by acting, you could be someone else. I just remember my mum always said to me, you know good at singing so you, you shouldn't worry to sing <laughs> so you you carry these messages that people will put into your head and consequently well probably i wasn't good at singing in any case but i carry that with me and now i've never tried to sing so i think in paris cat what i'm trying to say to a young person reading the book that anything is possible um why did you choose to base your story in the city of paris I think Paris has this romance, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, we think, oh, London, but Paris. It, it's funny the way we all conjure up this very romantic idea of Paris. But it, it was really to do with when I first traveled overseas, I lived in South Africa at the time. And when I first traveled to Europe, we actually traveled as a family. And I can remember my son actually celebrating his birthday on the top of the Eiffel Tower. Oh. So it sort of has that specialness for me as a city. And now that that same son actually lives in Paris and speaks oh, French. No way. Yes. Um, so I actually have some of the characters. Oh, um, wow. From our activity packs. Yes. But I just I love the humour of this book. Um, there's it's so witty and clever on so many levels. What was the idea of you um, using the characters of Edith Piaf and Josephine Baker? Um, I think what I wanted to show was that Paris has its dark side as well, but also its glitzy side. There's these, these two things happening. And in fact, if you set it in the 1930s, there were some very grungy streets in Paris and but at the same time by choosing two women or, or, or Edith Piaf and Josephine Baker they both came from quite impoverished backgrounds mm -hmm. and they made so much of their lives I mean Edith Piaf acted sort of in a circus a traveling circus she spent her life traveling around with her father when she was a little girl in a caravan mm -hmm. these are both such perfect examples of people that came from nothing and tried so extraordinarily hard to to do something with their lives. And then later on, they even did more because Josephine Baker adopted a whole lot of orphans. I can't remember. She adopted about 18 or something like that. And every nationality, every religion, she just made it a complete um, mission in life to have to look after these children. And then she also worked for the French resistance and in the war. And so did Edith Piaf. So they they led incredible lives. Can you tell us a bit more about your writing process? The actual writing process? Um, it's slow. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think people think of picture books as something that you just, you stirring this or you cooking or you doing that, yeah. or you're writing a letter and with the other <laughs> hand, you quickly writing a, a picture book text. But for me, it comes very, very slowly. If you have pencil and paper, it's so much more tactile. And I find that I can cross out or um, put squiggles or draw lines and I go back and forth and I work on other things at the same time. So I could be working on five different picture books all at the same time. But that's nice. It's a break. And I test it on my family, <laughs> my poor family. And in fact, <laughs> with Paris Cat, my son, who's also a writer, he said, but there's no point to that story. You've missed something. And he was the one that pointed out to me that the cat needed to go back to her origins. So she could have had all these amazing ideas and all this talent. But in the end, she needs to return to the people who she's actually really fond of her own family. And you know, sometimes you get asked the question, is there any book 
you would have liked to have written, you know, oh, yeah. any book you wished you had written. And so I've just put it aside here. Can I stretch it again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought if I'd ever written a book, can you see that? Oh, it's yeah. The Sea Thing Child. And it's also a story about bravery. It's written by Russell Hoban, who I could never, never, ever in a thousand years aspire to be any of his, to have any of his talent. And then it's um, illustrated by Patrick Benson, who did Our Babies. And he's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He such a wonderful. I did recognize the style, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the, also a story about bravery and needing to get out there and being encouraged by friends. What makes your collaborations with Pete Grobler so successful? Oh, Pete's got such energy and I never quite know what he's going to come up with. And we, I think actually both coming from the same environment, uh, both growing up in South Africa, we have a basis for understanding one another. But the interesting thing with him is in, for all our collaborations, I give him complete freedom because I want to see what he's able to do. You know where you have the hero's journey and, and in fact Paris Cat is very much a case of the hero's journey. Not that I use a template, but she's this, this is the known environment. She experiences a problem. She doesn't like living with all these alley cats and fighting over the fish. So she goes out into the new world and encounters problems, gets shooed out of the one place and goes out into the rain. I didn't tell Pitt what I envisaged there. I just gave him the story and he came up with the idea of her looking into a mirror. A lovely frou-frou blue dress and she's staring into the window, into the mirror and thinking, well, what is it? Do I really? I've got all this fame. I've got fortune, I've got money probably, but is this the life for me? Is this what I want? And then he's been very clever in that picture. He surrounded it with um, yeah. portraits of her friends. And there's another little touch that I love. Do you see between the, yeah. he's got fish tails <laughs> in the bouquet. <laughs> oh, here's a question for you. Where do you think Paris Cat is now? Ah, well, I think that Paris Cat's possibly gone to the south of France. Maybe she's uh, doing a little bit of cooking and having a home, her own vegetable patch and perhaps inventing very interesting cat-like dishes. So maybe she's going to do a Nigella Lawson on us. <laughs> I think London would suit, she wouldn't move here permanently, but I think London would suit her and she would be She'd find it very exciting, Trafalgar Square and um, the Albert Hall. Not bad to perform in the Albert Hall. So maybe that might be an idea for her. Yeah.